underscale plot there if you just kind of jot down the minor yet insignificant notes here. First of all, scatter plot is when you take some data and you try to arrange it in some sort of fashion. Uh, you got your xy coordinates here, and when you graph it, it doesn't fall in a straight line. Okay, it's not linear. It's not you know it's not directly proportional as all that stuff we've done. But when you do a scatter plot, you are looking for the pattern if there is one. And really, you have three different choices. Okay, one of them is this right here. Like it says, a positive correlation means that you look at the dots and you see that it's like a positive line. It, from left to right, it goes uphill in some sort of a pattern. I mean, you'd expect that this would continue to go up like this and blah, 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 blah. That's positive correlation. If it goes downhill like that, like my whole lesson today, that would be a negative correlation. Like this bad boy right here. That's kind of neat, isn't it? Notice all those dots all tend to go down. And then they don't have to have a correlation. Okay. In which case, this one right here, you see where it says zero correlation or no correlation because the dots, they're just scattered all over. You can probably figure out why it's called a scatter plot because things are kind of scattered around there. Now, when you do have a correlation, though, and that's what the rest of those things on your little paper are, okay, you can use these. Man, that's too big. Damn, that's too small. You can use these here. There's such a thing as called the line of best fit. I will make this bigger. Don't you worry, kids. And here is what the deal is. First of all, positive or negative correlation there? It's a negative correlation because it really looks like the dots are going down. Uh, we have what's called the line of best fit. And what that is, and this is not an exact science. What you need to try to do is take those dots and draw a line that kind of splits the dots evenly. You know, for example, if this is my if this is my scatter plot, and you kind of ignore some dots that happen to be way out there. But if you were to draw what's called the line of best fit, you try to draw your line. Now, I would call that a good effort. Why? Because it looks like if I were doing this and I tried to split things evenly, I would probably move this down a little bit like this and move this maybe up. Kind of so that you have the same number of dots below it as you have above it. Okay, this would be our, your line of best fit. And what you would do with that is, you know, if you have that, you can predict what's going to happen maybe out here farther in the graph that you don't have data for. Like, for example, this one is, what are we comparing here? How old the person is, driver's age and years, and how far away they can see the road signs. Okay, so here when you're 65 years old, you can make a prediction that, you know, that's where it crosses. You are, here's 400 and here's 300 feet. If you're 65 years old, you can probably see a sign that's like, what, 370, 380 feet away. You know, you got to be careful because obviously, you know, here where it gets to be about 90 years old, you're saying they can't see at all. Well, I don't know, I guess it would be 200 and some odd feet or whatever. Or as you go back farther this way, at 15 years old, you can kind of see, who knows, about 550 feet. Well, if you end up with, you know, if you kept this draft, the graph going to the left, you know, how far would you be able to see if you're zero years old? You know, it'd be in like the 7800s, which isn't necessarily true, but you can use this data to predict that. How about the next one? If you were drawing a line of best fit there, by the way, what are we, uh, what are we comparing here? Temperature and money. Temperature and money? Does it say right? That's the money you keep the building. Is it money to heat the building? No, I can't be because how about money to cool the building? That's what it would be, not heat the building, because heat would go the other way around. Okay, so yeah, if it's 12 degrees out, they're talking it costs about maybe $200 a month to heat it. If you were drawing a line of best fit, 
Where would you draw it? Well, again, you're trying to get as many dots above as you do below. Would that be good, or would you change that a little bit? Would you go down a little? Would you go down here? Certainly wouldn't do that because there's more above. Certainly wouldn't do that because, oh, certainly wouldn't do that because the picture moved. Do that. How about, what do you say there? Would anybody have an adjustment they would make? And then, again, with that line of best fit, you could predict, you know, if it's 20 degrees Celsius, which is relatively warm, how much it would cost to heat could be somewhere between 400 and uh, maybe 425, 430 dollars there. And then if you look way over here, I guess is there another one? There's another one, is there? This one? Oof. Positive correlation, negative correlation. Does it say what this graph is about on your paper? Age in dollars. This would be, I don't have any idea. Now, also, let me try to draw a line of best fit, see if you agree with me on this. In addition to doing this, do you like that or not? No, I would say this doesn't just suit this call a little bit. Do you think this should go down a little bit? Yeah. Okay, in addition to this, you should be able to, within some sort of reason, figure out the equation of the line. Somebody, tell me how I would do that. What is our linear equation form? What do we use for lines? Somebody? Cameron Colquitt? Y equals what? Mx. Plus? Plus. B. Get that in your little heads there, children. What is the letter B? Brooklyn? I can tell you're trying to think. What is the letter B? A lot of people you have to become eighth grade mathematics people here pretty soon. Key. The y intercept? Yes. So if I'm writing the equation for this line, what is my y intercept? Where is it across the y axis? If you're guessing, it's going to be what? Well, 9,500. What is my letter M, children? What is my letter M? Somebody over on the right hand side of the room. Elijah Fisher. What do we call the letter M here? The number that comes in front of the X is? Starts with S, ends with low. It is. It's the slope of the line. Now, can I figure out the slope of this? I sure can. I could get at least close. What do I have to do to figure out the slope of a line? Somebody? This. Isabel? Find two places where it crosses. Right. And draw a triangle and see how high the triangle is over how wide the triangle is. So I'm going to try and do that here. I'm going to, I am going to draw a couple of small lines just to see if we can figure something out here. Uh, let's put a line here. Oh, mine at 3,000. Mine at 6,000. Could do a thinner line there. Well, so let's say my triangle goes, let's say right here is nine, and then nine. There's a dot right there. So what's my point right there? It is nine comma what? What was this? Three thousand, right? I guess that doesn't matter. I need to find another point. Could I use this point here? Let's just say I can and I draw my line straight down here. So here's my triangle. I need to find slope based on this triangle. Well, how high is my triangle? If it goes from 3,000 to 6,000, it is how high? Oh, look at you guys go. So there's my how high it is. How wide is it from 5 to 9? 1, 2, 3, 4. And by 3,000 divided by 4 is what? Wow. Somebody say 7. 750. Thank you very much. So my slope is 750. So y equals 750 times x plus 9,500. And with that, if you have this equation, you can predict anything. 
You can predict at age 12. Just put 12 in for X and figure out your thing. At age 0, we got 9,500, which is what we should have. At age 1, 9,500 plus 750 is what, 10,250? I'm sorry, no, it's... Uh, 13,000. Which one? It might, oh, what was the problem with this? Which one thing? What one thing did the teacher miss here? Somebody. Keith. Negative slope. It is negative slope. So you're subtracting 750 for every time. So there you go. You'd have to take 9,500 9, minus 750, which is what? 8,750? Is that where we end up with at 1? Pretty close. This is where most people are gasping amazement there. <gasps> now, here is going to be some practical application that you are going to, we're going to do together as one big group. And I apologize if I spelled anybody's name wrong, but I was under the gun. We are going to see if there is a correlation between your shoe size and your height. So you need to, while I'm handing these out, first of all, know your shoe size. Secondly, you need to know how many inches tall you are, which means if you're five foot four, five feet is sixty inches, so add sixty plus four is eighty four. So you don't have a ton of time to do this. So if you don't know how tall you are, I will get you the, the information you need, but you should know somewhere where you are. So, let's see, I've got this here. You need to fill in your table while I fill in your table. So everybody put this information here. Alton Burt, your shoe size. Nine point five, and your height. Sixty-eight. So you're five eight. Yeah. Look at all. We can figure hers out. Danny. Shoe size, sir. Okay. And your height. Sixty-nine. Mitch. Uh, eleven and a half or ten and a half. And height. Sixty-nine. Jules. Uh, eight and a half. Height? Uh, 63 inches. 63. Colquitt? Eight and a half. Height? 62 inches. 62. I like it. Jenna? Uh, nine and a half. 9.5. Height? 65 inches. I can already see it seems to be there's a correlation here. Fisher? 12. Oh boy. And height? 68. 68. Uh, Luke? Uh, eight. Eight? 65. 65. Uh, Isabel? Seven. And? 62. 62. Louise? Uh, eight. Height? 65. Five. Riley? Eight. Height? 93. 93. I have more down here than I don't see. Yep. Kate? Eight and a half. Eight point five. Height? 62. Two, Lainey? Nine. Height? Uh, 63. Three. Is there more? Or no? Mm -hmm. Underneath that. Mm -hmm. You could have stopped me before I did all that. Five. Grace? Oh, Maddie? Seven. And height? Brianna? Uh, five. And 62. 62. Tyler? 11. And? 67. Drew? You still have no idea? I don't know. Go stand next to the door frame. Sorry, but I don't know. Just back up next to where those masking tape marks are. Oh, okay. Five. There you go, five, six, sixty-six. Brooklyn? Nine and a half? Yep. And height? Uh, 65. Maddie? 10. And height? 65. 65. Jane? Uh, 11. Height? 70. Oh, somebody breaks the Josh? 8. 8. Yeah. Height? 9. Keith? Uh, 11.5. Uh, 
Hi. Back up there. You're an inch shy of that. Uh, so 65. Uh, and Winkleman. Eight. And height? 64. 64. Perfect. All right. Now we've got our raw data. We are going to see, and we're going to make a scatter plot of this. So you got to go back here, and you got to think of what our ranges for this stuff are here. How are we going to make our label? Our x-axis will be shoe size. Correct. And the deal is this. What are our ranges? We went from, I believe, seven to five. Five to what? Five to twelve. So, if we are going five to twelve and we want half sizes, because people gave us half sizes, so let's just start at, well, can we go five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten, ten and a half, eleven and a half. Make each one start at five. And we'll start at five. And then this will be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's a beautiful thing. If this is our shoe size, then going up is your height. And our range in height is what? What's the shortest? Two with the tallest? Seven. So you only have eight inches in height. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's just do that. Well, let's let's tell you what, let's make this let's just make this bottom one 60. 60, 61, 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, right? Now because mine's on a different piece of paper, I'm going to ask you to tell me what Oh, I could probably wait. Maybe I can fix this. Can I fix this? Anybody? What's my favorite thing in all the world? No math by car. <laughs> yes, besides the seventh grade, my favorite thing in all the world is Money. the snippet tool on this. Because I can, oh, if it works, which it won't because my board is bad. Please, please work. Please, please, please. Yes. <laughs> And then I just pop it on here. Watch this. Paste. This is technology at its greatest. Make this smaller. Drag it over here. Drag it over here. All right, so here, let's fill in my chain. Let's put it up here. So here we go. Filling in the blanks. You should you probably could be doing this without me because do it with smart. Alright, so Aubrey 9.5 and 68. Here's 9.5. 68 is right here. Bam. Danny 1069. 1069. Uh, Mitch, 10.569. You're done yet? You don't have to wait till me. You can fill it in yourself. 8.5, 63. 8.5, 63. 9.5, 65. Fisher, you 12 and 65? How'd that happen? You're in the non white arm 68. Oh, you're 68? That's why. 6, 7, 68. This is not there. Forget that. 8, 65. 7, 62. 8, 65. 8, 63. 8.5, this is two of them there. 963. Oh, Grace is in here. 764. Oh, 562. Uh, 1167. 
six. Nine point five sixty five. Ten sixty five. Eleven seven. Where'd that come from? Eight sixty five. Eleven point five sixty five. And eight sixty four. So, looking at it, positive correlation, negative correlation, definitely goes uphill from left to right. Drawing a line of best fit, if you will, what do you suppose it would look like? I'm guessing, I don't know. What would yours look like? Um, would you think I'd move this side down? Yeah. What would you think? Down here somewhere? Better or worse? Better. Okay. Well, if that's the case, Brianna's 562 is pretty bad. You're not that short to have size 5 feet, are you? You sure if you your family? Your mom's feet so small? Are you sure? Maybe that's size 5 and whatever. So, there you go. How about dry, how about somebody give me an equation for that line? Y equals mx plus t. The problem with this, we can't actually do it because we don't know where the y-axis is. Why is this not the y-axis? Oops. Somebody, why can't I use this as my y-intercept? Can we focus? Right, because we don't have point, we don't have a zero line. Zero is the y-axis, and we started at five. You'd have to come way back here. And at zero, I don't know, would that cross at zero? I doubt it. But we could certainly find the slope of the line, right? You could right here put a point, and you could maybe right here put a point, make this your triangle. How high is my triangle? Three. How wide is it? Remember, each one of these right with a half. Half, one, half. So three halves. You could make the assumption then that for every shoe size you go up, the person is three and a half inches taller. I mean that's just and again this is this is not exact science. This is just so that you have a trend line so you can kind of get just about a gist. The only people that this would actually be specifically accurate for would be the people whose lines actually fell on the line. Whoever this person that was 762, you know, whoever this person that was 1168, you know, those people, was there a person here? Whoever was 965, you know, you guys are like, it's like when you were a baby and your parents took you to get weighed and length, they would say, well, you fit. You're, you're in the 50th percentile. This would be the normal 50th percentile. Everybody above it is in the higher percentile. Than everybody above. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's just that this is the general garden variety of that sort of 